I'm Kitty Sakosan Kun from Major University. Today I'd like to introduce you Simple Load Disaggregation Library based on NIMTK. Okay, let me introduce you NIM first. NIM is actually stand for non-intrusive load monitoring. As you can see uh, in the pictures here, yeah, uh, is a graph of uh, power usage in a household. And we'd like to know which appliance is using at that time, at that moment. And we would like to get the graph like just like this. This is the household and then this is the disaggregate data. This is the process of NOEM. And at the moment, yeah, there is some kind of toolkit written in Python called NAMTK. It's a toolkit to estimate and uh, appliance power usage and it's actually a community based and it's open source and you can just download and install in your computer and then start disaggregating data immediately and it's also supported some uh, kind of several uh, data set public data set and the most famous one is RRED yeah it's the first NLM data set and it is actually supported by MIT University. And the second one is BLUED, is actually the name of the color, right? It's blue, it's uh, actually um, published from CMU, Carnegie Mellon University. And another one is UK Dell, this is a really famous one from UK because it's very really complete data set and it lasts about four years of data. And there's much more data set that is supported by NIMTK at the moment. And also there are several disaggregation algorithms as well. And one of the, I mean, two, two of the most famous algorithm to disaggregate load monitoring data is actually FHMM and CO, that's a factorial hidden Markov model and combinatorial optimization algorithm. So this is actually an uh, interested algorithm. And also there is a matrix, performance metric that included in the NIMTK. This matrix yeah, can be uh, used, can, I mean, can be generated from the toolkit with a simple, single, simple command. Yeah? For example, root mean square, mean number of error, or even two positive rate, four positive rate rates is a basic um, matrix for machine learning actually. And also NIMTK also has its own data format, which is they use HDF5 container to contain the data, data set. And that's including time and power meter reading and appliance power meter. And also, include the metadata of the data set as well. That's something like the location of the data set and time zone and sensor type and which room, which floor in which building and how the data can be obtained and how long is it on off and switch, something like that. There's several uh, information that can be put into the HD5 container inside in the MTK data format. And NMDK pipeline is actually, and uh, if you can see here, yeah, there's a data set, and then you put the data set into data format, and then you can have statistics for of that data format, and then you can start pre-processing and training a model, and then you can start disaggregation for the appliance power usage, and then you can have the metrics of the uh, performance of the algorithm. Yes, it's, NMTK is really powerful for the task, but it's not user friendly for new researcher at all. How? For installation procedure, it's really, really painful for a newcomer who would like to install the uh, NMTK. It's just uh, the thing is, it's not that easy because the document is not really well uh, prepared 
it's community based, right? As you know, that uh, people uh, just come and go, come and go, and then they sometimes uh, some small point that's missing, and then you can get stuck on your own. Then you need to ask someone else to and to do to, uh, to learn something. And also, and the problem, another problem is library dependency. It's a version compatibility because this uh, NMDK is actually uh, has been introduced for a while ago, and the version has been changed like. Uh, NumPy and Pandas, they, they has been changed for a newer version, and sometimes the newer version is not compatible with the old one, so that could cause a problem when you install this. I when when the, for me when the first time I'd like to install an MTK, it took me a few weeks. Yes, if a few weeks for a new newly uh, researcher like me, and also environment setup, and it's a bit painful at the beginning. But once you know what you're doing, then you can get things start pretty much quicker. And another thing is a uh, custom dataset. If you have your own dataset, and it can be difficult to put your data into uh, NMDK data format. In this case, like uh, HDF5. And you also need to put your metadata, like time zone or something. And another problem is like time zone confliction. This is actually one of the most headache when you are not uh, doing when when you're not working in the same area with the dataset. For example, if you are in Thailand and you would like to work on the dataset from the UK, that's about six hours or seven hours different. That has some issue, and it's especially for daylight saving as well. That can be a headache when you yeah, when you start to train your data and to uh, predict of your data. So I'd like to introduce you a simple logistication Python library, and this library is just. Uh, focusing on disaggregation only, I take it uh, all unnecessary, unnecessary feature out from from NMTK and simple data format. Just use a Python data frame, a simple Python data frame, which everyone knows about this already. So you can just start prepare your data immediately, and also algorithm is actually taken from NMTK, so the performance should be the same because it's actually the same algorithm. And also, uh, the model can be reused for an online application or near real-time disaggregation. And you can see here, yeah, you have a dataset, and then you just put into SLD format. You, you have a data frame, simple, yeah? And then you have data frame, you can start training, and then you get the model and then you can just start this aggregation and then you get the results. It's much quicker than an MTK. So we have four steps actually. The first one is import library. Second one, prepare data frame and then train the model and then you can start disaggregate your load data. Okay, for to import library, yeah. In uh, SLD library, you need NumPy and Pandas and SHMM Learn, and that's that's only three library that you you need. And then you need to choose which algorithm you would like to get to use. That is uh, FHNM and then CO. That these two are available because it's actually available in NMTK as well. And then after you import your library, then you have a data frame. You, you need to prepare your data frame for, in this case, there, there are two types of data frame. One is the training and one for testing. For the training data frame, yeah, you need three at least three columns. That is that is uh, timestamp, power, and then appliance. And then you can have more appliance you have, uh, if you have more in your household. This is for the household, it's actually the cloud data. And then for another data frame, it's a test, testing. 
one for uh, timestamp and another one for aggregated power and that's it that's the only thing that you need for testing the data and then after that you can have a training model so you, you need to put list of appliance to let the model know which appliance that you are looking for and then you can just put the name on as a list yeah and then you can start issue a command fhmm FH train and then put a data frame and then list of appliance and that's it you get a model and then you can save the model for reuse later and then you can start this aggregate with a simple command like fhnm is aggregate and put your data frame in and do you need a data frame to uh, get the result that's it and the result is as you can see the performance is should be the same as nmmtk but it has much less procedure because you don't need to uh, worry about time zone or worry about metadata and other things so it's much faster and as it's faster it can be used for online application as well that's it and uh, you can download this library from github as well you can you can just uh, click the link get to the link and or scan your qr code to see the library and reuse later and if you have any questions you can just ask me here yeah, that's it thank you